This is Vicast. It's a Viking thing. Ross Lager. Shield wall! All of my life and all of your lives have come to this point. There is nowhere else to be but here. No, I always knew I would love these Northmen. This is Vicast with Clive Standen and Amy Bailey. And as the King of Wessex and King of Brett Walder, all of England, I order you to listen to Vicast. It's a Viking thing. The podcast direct from Valhalla. Hi everyone, I'm George Blagden and I play Athelstan on Vikings. And you should tune into this incredible podcast, Vicast. It's a Viking thing. This is Vicast. Hello, I am Alyssa Sutherland and this is Vicast. It's a Viking thing. This is Joseph Parker on Vikings. It's a Viking thing. Chill wall! Hi there, this is Kevin Durand. This is Harvard the Wanderer. You're listening to Vicast. This is a Viking thing. Welcome to another episode of Vicast, where we get our Viking cast members back together for a Viking thing. This is Amy Bailey and Clive Standen interviewing the amazing, the phenomenal, the multi-talented Kevin Durand, who played Harbard on our little humble show. Welcome, Kevin. Hi. How's it going? Thanks for having me. Where are you right now? I am uh, in your old neighborhood, Clive. Weren't you on the west side of Toronto for Taken? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So we're we're in Roncesvalles. So I'm out here for, for a while. I'm gigging out here so i just got the family up here we're quarantining we're on day 14 of quarantining with a five-year-old and a 20 month old (gasps) um so it's been it's been it's been fun (laughs) i can hear the pain in your voice no it's been lovely it's it's been lovely i just feel bad for them because they don't get it they're like why can't i go say hi to that lady on the street that's yeah that looks friendly who's waving and you know she just doesn't get it and i'm like well you shouldn't go say hi to just random people on the street anyway because they might kill you with a virus i mean <laughs> apparently yeah, yeah apparently, yeah. apparently. Yeah. we are in canada though everybody is very uh very it seems like everybody's very careful mm-hmm. and um you know Wait. i was here a little while earlier and it was everyone's kind of abiding here, it seems. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you're Canadian. Mm. Are you not abiding, Kevin? I am. Mm-hmm. From Thunder Bay originally, right? <sighs> Thunder Bay, Ontario. Cool, coolest sounded place. Yeah. Thunder Bay. I, I agree. I love Thunder Bay. It's been a while, but uh, yeah. No, so now it's uh, Toronto till fall. Look, actually, growing up in Thunder Bay, though, to be all honest, as we're talking Vikings, that is quite a Viking place to grow up, right? It's it's the, it's quite cold. It's kind of got some harsh environments there. For, I mean, you must have been you must have been quite hardy to grow up there. Um, yeah, we have a lot of um, a, a lot of Nordic people have moved to Thunder Bay from you know from all the the, the, the Nordic countries. A, a lot of Finns, a lot of Finns in Thunder Bay. A lot of finished pancakes everywhere. <laughs> um, you can buy the best finished pancakes. It's the best. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, you're talking, you know, minus 40, minus 50 is no big surprise. What? Uh, yeah. For many, many months of the year. <laughs> Good Lord. So, so, yeah. So. I remember the first time I met you, sir. You were in the makeup uh, chair on Vikings, and I came in, and you get used to being Rollo, the big guy. You know, I was, I'd worked out a lot and, you know, I'm six foot three. So, you know, you tend to be one of the taller ones on the show. And I remember w- walking into the makeup room and you were sitting down having your first makeup test and things. And they're like, hey, have you met Kevin yet? And then you were sitting down. And I was like, hey, Kevin. And then you stood up. And I felt like <laughs> you were what, six foot six, six foot seven. And you was just like, I was looking up to you and you were ginormous. And I was like, whoa, I didn't think the you know, Vikings would get much bigger than the, the Vikings in the show. And, you know. You were, a, you were a man mountain of a Viking. I remember that was the very first time. I got really tall for that show. <laughs> you're really that talented of an process. actor. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I got really tall for that. I remember that. Had you ever been tall before? <laughs> <laughs> I was 5'6 before I was offered right. Vikings. And um, I was like, well, I'm going to get to work. 
I remember actually we went for a beer as well, didn't we, Kevin? And you were because you, you are that yeah. you, you said you you were that you're that much taller than everybody else that if someone recognises you from a show, you you can't you don't stand a chance of kind of trying to hide it because your head just pops up above everybody in the crowd, so everyone just yeah. gets drawn. Who's that tall? It's the tall guy from Lost, or it's the tall guy from Real Steel, or yeah, it's the yeah, tall yeah. guy from The Strain. It's like yeah, you can't escape it. But I'm also the actor that loves every second of it, though. I'm, 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 I'm so, I'm always like, oh, I guess business is good. That's great. Yeah, come and talk to me and say nice things about me. Don't say bad things because I am from Thunder Bay. So. <laughs> yeah. Amy, this, 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 say nice things. this amazing, incredible actor from Thunder Bay, if you put all of his movies and TV shows combined, have come up to $2.5 billion. So how much? That's what I just read on the internet what? when I was researching. That's you came in two point five billion dollars. All of the films and TV shows you've been in, if you combine all the box office profit, you're worth two point yeah, five billion dollars. Kevin, you are one of the one. You're a one percenter. <laughs> I'm a one percenter. <laughs> um, I've just been lucky, man. You know, it just. Uh, I mean, the. Uh, I, I. I. Yeah, it's been a great trip. It's been. It's been about thirty years now. So. Um, theater for the first you know 10 or so and then and then, uh, and then i just got you know i'm well well you're 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 talented no oh well thank you very much for saying it but i i mean i still like there's a lot of talented people out there and and i'm i'm just always so grateful that i get to you know do this you know um I'm always probably one of the happiest guys on set too, because I still can't believe that I get to do this for a living. Cause like where I'm from, you know, I mean, you know, my dad was working in 40, 50 below with rheumatoid arthritis and he had been doing it since he was seven years old. Lumberjack, and right? He was a real hard working man. Yeah. I would have been like ninth generation lumberjack or 10th generation or something. And, and, uh, so to me, it's like when people go, "Oh, we've been working for sixteen hours and it's so cold," and and I'm always just kind of shaking my head. I was like, "We haven't worked. All we've done is play." It's like it's so fantastic. It's like, uh, uh, yeah. So I'm 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 still that kid at forty seven. I'm always that grinning kid going, "Holy shit, this is awesome!" What? Yeah. What was your um what was your audition process like for Vikings? Did you audition for the character? Did it come to you? How did it how did you find out? Um uh, uh Michael had uh um they had reached out to me um uh with with, with uh, a couple of things before that things didn't work out. Um um and then when they came to me with Har- Harvard, I was just like, when I read the words, um, I was just like, there's, this is like the greatest gift. Because I, I mean, just like Clive was just saying, you know, I'm, I, because I'm a big guy, I often get cast as, or I used to get cast as, as characters that were, you know, sometimes monosyllabic, <laughs> not, 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 not really carrying a whole lot of weight within the narratives that I was working in. I mean, that was like the beginning for me, and then, and then um, over the years, uh, it was opposite to how it was in theater. Um, you know, and then, and then, uh, you know, when I read Harvard, I, I mean, I think those were the best words that I had had a chance to read to to act, and since my days on the wow. stage probably you know um i just thought it was so fantastic and i just saw the, the potential for for all of the the layers every every every, every sentence just like kind of rocked wow. my world i was like really excited so i became mad obsessed and i never left my hotel room i never got to see dublin i was constantly in my room driving myself insane finding them and then i finally found them and and uh, yeah, it was it was it was terrific, man. I loved loved every second of it. Yeah, and and holy cow, you guys are so awesome, all of you. Like I watched this show, and I was just such a huge fan of it. I mean, just from like the even just from the yeah. from the credits 
Oh, it was just so goddamn epic. And I was just like, wow. Uh, it's so cool to get to be a part of your family for a while. How much did you know about Vikings before that? I mean, other than the show. Um, I mean, uh, I, I wasn't like well read in, in, in regards to the, uh, you know, the, the specifics of, of places that they had conquered and whatnot. I, I was aware of, 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 um, of when they conquered France, when you conquered yeah. France, Rolo. Um, cause my, um, my great, 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 great grandmother was a six foot three, Whoa. uh, French right. lady. And I saw pictures of her and she has my face. It's really weird. I have, I, sorry, I have her face. It's really weird. And um, she was from that area and I had looked into it and I was like, because she married no this tiny That's little good. Frenchman um, who's 5'6". And, and, uh, and yeah, the, and, and then in, 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 in the genealogy, in the uh, genetic... Oh, uh, the genetics, um, you know, in my family, there, there are like some extremely tall people and there's some, you know, not so tall people. So it's, it's kind of interesting to see who comes from her. My great grandfather was a German cattle rancher who moved down to Mexico and he married my great grandmother who was about the size of my pinky finger, little Mexican lady. And so our family's really mixed like that, oh, the wow. German and the Mexican some giant, some tiny. Yeah. I did the twenty three and me. I was, I was. So many fans has asked me if you know if I've done twenty three and me. If I got Viking blood and all this good stuff. I was so excited. I've got, got a, Wouldn't it be great if I play a Viking? And I did the twenty three and me, and it came back. And I was like, I think I was like seventy five percent Irish, fifteen percent French. I got a bit of French in me. So the roller there was hardly any Scandinavian at all. I was ninety eight percent. I was 98% Neanderthal, though, what? which apparently was in the... Shut up. Yeah, very rare. I've been, I've been reading about, about that. So you, do you know, um, there's a really interesting study going around right now. Um, I've been reading a lot of fun, nerdy stuff. And, um, and uh, so apparently, uh, human beings who have uh, Neanderthal... Uh, uh, genes, even 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 down to three percent, are up to I think it's forty to. Don't please don't take this verbatim, please anyone listening. But uh, it was, I think it was like forty to fifty percent more resistant to COVID. Um, uh, uh, wow. Like yeah. any of the you know the COVID, the SARS, uh, a, a, any a, 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 any of of the viruses that live in that family, they're going to come back. So the Neanderthals yeah. um, have this. So, so, well, the people who are from uh, the areas where the Neanderthals lived uh, mm -hmm. seem to be. Um, I, I don't know if this is true, but I, I, apparently we're more resistant to, um, you know, I've, I've got some of the two power. They're going to be surprised. <laughs> surprise. <laughs> surprise. <laughs> did, um, did Michael Hurst tell you a little bit about where he wanted this character to go? Because it is the one character in the show still to me, and I'm sure there's many fans watching this as well, that we're all still a little bit confused as to where, what he was, the mystique around him, because... When I went to I went to Iceland, I was lucky enough to go to Iceland for the real Vikings, the documentary to go. Um, and I went to a turf hut in the middle of nowhere, and it was snowing. You know, it was up to my knees in snow, and we had to march out just a couple of couple of fields through up to my you know, knees snow. And then we got to this turf hut, and then we talked um, about stories and the sagas. And uh, the historians I was with were saying, "Look, these wanderers would have to. You did two fields; they would do you know twenty miles in the snow, and they would see a." a cabin and they'd need a very very good story to get lodgings and food for the night you know because these stories about supping with the gods and 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 the and yorman ghast and you know and whatever uh, creature or or story from midgard and utgard and asgard they would they would have to come up with the an original version of that story and you couldn't i've heard that one before so whether you know, I always thought is, is Harbor just an amazing storyteller? He's just, he's just, he's got everyone wrapped around his finger with these stories, or 
is he like a cult leader, which was, you know, we were talking to Alyssa mm. about that. Or is he really a god? Is he Hemdal? Mm. Or is he... <laughs> Or is he okay. Odin, Loki, Thor? This is, this is, yeah. What do you think? Or do you know? My conversations with Michael were mostly, um, you know, I studied Rasputin more than anything. Mm, mm-hmm. um, we talked about Rasputin mm-hmm. um, and his journeys and his uh, ad- adventures and you know, the way that he went about his life. Um so whether he was an actual god or not, I honestly, it's hard for me to tell. But I, I, I mean, there was one episode, um, I forget what number of the episode was. It was, uh, it was when um, Floki was, it kept cutting back from Floki to Harvard. And uh, to me, it was basically kind of, pointing out that we were the same uh, spirit, that maybe Harvard was his spirit animal or that he was mine, or that uh, we were both mm. the same. And we were, uh, you oh, know, wow. kind of... Uh, um, so I kind of thought that I might have been Loki, yeah. but it, that is not from Michael Hurst. I mean... Quite the trickster. I mean, I I was I was, yeah, I was trickster. you know much to my wife's chagrin. You know, he was getting it on with everybody. <laughs> oh, that, that's a good. Apparently, his stories were really good because <laughs> yeah. he he was uh, he was uh, you know he was kind of uh, pop- repopulating the village. Yeah. Well, you know, it was a new beefcake in town. <laughs> Good times. Yeah, yeah, good times. Good times. Come on by. <laughs> so, you know, I've just been watching The Vow on HBO as well, and, then we, and Alyssa was talking about the cult leader kind of aspect of it, how he managed to just manipulate everyone in town, and they all suddenly, it's like the Pied Piper kind of syndrome. I mean, did any of that come into the, the research as well, with the kind of that, that manipulation aspect of, of Harvard? I mean, there's also the other kids, your children, are, the children are dying and, and in the ice and she seems to be almost hypnotized and they're spelled by you. Yeah. Um, I guess his stories were just really good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm speaking in code. Do you know what I'm talking about? My stories, big stories. Yeah. Turgid, Maybe, yeah. Really turgid stories. Really big stories. Really yeah, I mean, it's it's very interesting. I I, 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 I was kind of stories. played it in my head yeah. that I that I that I was. That you know, it, it comes down to this: it's like, is he a supreme being? Well, I believe that he believed that he was. So um, whether he was or not, I mean, exactly, how did yeah. I take um, um, how, how did I take the pain away from? You know, uh, from what was wrong with me? From yeah, it's what the isn't it what the Vikings called big story big energy? Story energy. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. Um, yeah, so I don't know. It's, it, it, it would be interesting to hear what people think because I have people coming up to me all the time saying, oh, "Are you Loki? Are you Odin?" You know, um, um, yeah. It's it's it's, and, and I wish I could tell people people what it was. I know what I thought I was. Let me ask you about, um, and then I actually, I, I texted Alyssa t- this morning and I told her um, that we were interviewing you. And I said, do you have it? I said, oh, you should ask Kevin a question. So I do have a question that she um, oh. texted uh, for you. So my first question is f- about her. How do you think he changed, especially Oslog? How do you think he, because she was at such a turning point in her life, but she was really suffering, and you seem to, um, Harvard seemed to come in and give her a new lease on life, I guess. Um, but how do you think she, you changed her character specifically? I think that, um, even though Harvard was a bit of, um, of, uh, a lover of many, I, I, I think that he truly did, uh, love her and gave her um let her understand what her actual um um or maybe not let her understand uh being loved like mm. that will uh you know the way that my wife loves me mm-hmm. the way that i love my the way that i love my children the way that they love me 
that love is the most powerful thing in the world. So when you're truly loved by someone, you know, now, and I say, I, I, what is that line that I say to her? I say, um, I say, love, love is different from possession. Yeah. You know? And I, t and, and she, she wanted to possess me. Mm. And all I wanted to do was love her. So to possess someone means that you can't, they can't go and give love to other people. Right. Um, that, that there's a great fear of that. Whereas I just loved freely and I loved her as far as I, as I was thinking it, the way that I was playing was that she was the, the greatest love of his. Um, but, um, but he didn't understand how to only love one mm -hmm. person at a time. Mm. Um, so that kind of love uh, transforms people, makes us stronger, makes us uh, believe that anything is possible. Mm. Talking about transform transformative love, he now got two kids. Father, it's the only true unconditional love there is out there. How does he think that being a father has, has, has changed you? Oh, good God. Um, yeah. Um, I, uh, I completely, uh, changed in, in, in ways that I didn't expect. Um, I'd always been a very, I think, loving and, um, I think, uh, a, a, a kind person. Um, when my children came into the world, uh, First of all, there's this uh, immeasurable, um, immeasurable love that 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 comes into your life that you could never have understood. I, uh, uh, Ryan Reynolds, <laughs> I would never say this, but Ryan, Ryan Reynolds said in an interview, I, thought, I just thought it was so funny. It was like, look, I love my wife. I love my wife so much. But if my child was standing in front of a bus, I would throw her in front of it to save the kid. <laughs> um, I just thought that was the absolute, uh, it's just such a horrible thing to say. Um, yeah, it's just uh, indescribable. And that kind of love, what comes with it is this, um, this weight that um, I had to uh, process um, um, and I think my priorities uh, truly changed. I was so yeah, right. I, I was I, I was so incredibly uh, selfish, and and uh, I mean I'm I have obs uh, obsessive uh, compulsive disorder and um, anxiety disorder. I'm I'm kind of a mess, and all of that stuff flared, um, uh, and. <sighs> It was, uh, I really had to dig deep to, and, and, and let go of this self-obsession that I had with my job. Um, um, I'm still obsessed, but it's, I can, it feels a lot easier and actually more fun now. Um, and life as well, everything in life feels a lot more fun and 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 laid back because i can't i can't go to work and play some of these really dark um these dark humans that i often get called upon to play and then take that home anymore so um you know it's like that marathon man sir lawrence olivier thing where he's like just act my friend i think i'm I'm learning how to do that. I've been forced to learn how to do that and just trust that everything that I need is within me and I don't have to live within mm -hmm. it. Yeah. yeah. I think when, so no, I, I think Clav and I understand perfectly because we've, we've both got little mm. sports. Actually. You got your babies. Yeah. Actually yeah. we, so you we have, um, <laughs> when you came on set, I was super, super heavily pregnant when I met you because mm -hmm. I had my twins in mm -hmm. September of 2015. Wow. And I know your wife was super, super pregnant. You were showing me pictures of her. 
August 30th. I know. When did yeah. you, when were yours born again? September 3rd. Oh, so close. Right? I know. We were both, oh yeah, we were both oh, yeah. waddling pregnant ladies. I remember, Kevin, you and I went out for a Chinese meal, and you were worried that you might actually get the phone call and say that you had to come back <laughs> home because she might be she might be going yeah. into labor. And, yeah, I was pretty And you were like, scared. we got one more week left, but I might have to go. <laughs> I was really scared. Yeah, the timing was... When did you wrap? Really, we were what, really what cutting What month did you wrap? Um... Well, she was born August 30th, and I think I got back on the 15th of Whoa. August, I think. So it was, it was pretty tight. Yeah, it was pretty tight. Um, but I got back, and, you know, I got to uh, deliver her, <gasps> uh, and I pulled her out, and I lifted her up, you know, at my height. And she she's kind of like this. And she looked me in the eye, and I changed forever. Whoa. And and all I could hear was a no, like this slow motion thing. And, and then all of a sudden, it came, I, I came to like uh, to the present, and the nurses were like, "Oh no, she's cold." And I was like, "I don't, I don't know if I was like that for forty five minutes." And like, Aah! yeah, like I don't know what was happening. Like angels were singing. I don't know, but. I had that. I had that very same dad moment as well when I lifted my son Rafi up, and it was like, oh, and then he just peed all over his mum. Got the pictures. This is a stream of piss. Right away, he was like, "She's mine." <laughs> That's awesome. That I love it that you that you both did that. That's amazing. Uh, Anthony caught my babies as well on our, our living room floor. Oh my gosh! Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. It wasn't as easy as for me, though. I mean, they because I remember I think Brad Pitt has just been in the papers like he had had his uh, Shiloh, um, he had had another country and he was allowed to you know help out in the in cesarean. Ooh. Um, and the, I had the chief of surgery as um, as our uh, delivering uh, this was Edie, and he said, uh, you can get involved, I'm the chief of surgery, no one's gonna tell me off. So I remember when the moment came, they went, Mr. Stanton, would you like to scrub in? And I was like, oh, and I ran around the corner, and you obviously have to get the gloves on with a, you know, without touching any of the oh. outside. And I'd never practiced this. I'd never played a dog for a movie. <laughs> so I'm kind of putting this glove on. i got massive hands, and I'm sure you got bigger hands than me, but i got these massive hands, and the gloves didn't seem to fit. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so then I was like, and they were like, Mr. Stanton, we're waiting for you. Oh. My, 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 <laughs> and I'm like, come on, I'm coming, I'm coming. So I ended up getting, I ended up getting the gloves oh, halfway man. on. They put the scissors in my hand, and I got my scissors. I was like calamity, oh. you know, <laughs> Dr. Awesome. Calamity yeah. Clive. But I managed to get in there, and I cut the cord. And picked him up. I picked her up. This was easy. The first. first oh, that's um, lovely. There's no bigger moment, really, right? I mean. No. I mean, once you go there, I mean, what's bigger than that? Yeah. No. Let me, um, let me, as, as, uh, this kind of segues into Alyssa's question, because this has to do with you being a family man. Uh, this is a direct quote from Alyssa's text. Um, she says she hopes, hopes you don't mind that you are being asked this. <laughs> she says, <laughs> despite having a long working history before joining us on the Viking set, I remember that our sex scene was, in fact, the first of your career. Would you enlighten fans about your experience as a married man, for example? And then she says, I'm talking handbags, Kevin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that started it, actually. Um, no, it didn't start it. No. No, it didn't start it. But, um, oh, okay, sorry, you don't even know what I'm talking about. No. First off, I'm, <laughs> di- I'm driving in the car with my wife next to me and I have never really made out with girls on the screen. It's like I got to 40 and people started to go, Oh, you know, maybe, <laughs> maybe he'd scene. like to take his clothes <laughs> off, which is really weird because <laughs> I spent the first 20 years, you know, killing girls in movies and TVs and, and, and kidnapping them and eating their children. And then all of a sudden they're like, Oh, maybe, maybe he should now, be a part of the propagation and multiplication and <laughs> and um uh, yeah so we're in the car and my lawyer goes so kevin yeah um i needed to discuss uh it says here in the contract something about you uh showing your gluteal crease are you okay with that and i was <laughs> that's my glute 
is my ass crack? And my wife's like, uh huh. I was like, okay. Hey, so, um, so, so. Is that what they call it? Gluteal crease? How glute- dry. Gluteal crease. I'll never forget. Gluteal crease. I'll have to show his gluteal crease. Uh, That's amazing. And, um, <laughs> Yeah, so my wife and I came up with the deal um, when I was testing um, uh, characters, when I was testing Nora's, uh, the character of Nora in The Strain. Um, They wanted to do chemistry reads with me and and Corey Stoll uh, with these girls. And uh, (laughs) I told Guillermo this deal that I had with my wife. I said, look, because I felt so bad and so... Um, so uncomfortable with the idea of making out with girls on film when I finally found my soulmate. I was not cool, you know, I was yeah. really nervous about it. And so um, I told Guillermo del Toro this deal where, like, whenever I kiss a girl or make out with a girl, I have to buy my wife a handbag because <laughs> my wife loves handbags and so during the tests anyways uh uh, at the end of the scene i'm about to kiss they were about to kiss these girls and then guillermo would go stop save you another handbag (laughs) (laughs) it's just like it's like got you you owe me man you know and uh i'm I'm, uh, and it was just really funny so then uh yeah with with Alyssa, um yeah, she because of her, I had to get a lot of him <laughs> for my wife. You know, I I think Clive, I'm sure you get it too. Uh, people like so many fans ask us about how sexy it is to do sex scenes, and uh, hands down, I've, I'm like, no, it ain't sexy. It's awkward. It's weird. It's oh your friend. God. It's just like, no, it's not. It's not. And hot. There's like ten to twelve other people hilarious. in the room who really don't want to be yeah. there and look at your junk or anything <laughs> yeah. like that. Yeah. <laughs> And on on Vikings, did you get that triangle thing with the yeah, string? Yeah, I did, and I I, I had my yeah, own. Little... I had never seen that before. I remember in the middle of doing a scene oh, with Jesslyn, it kind of came it came dang, hangling down. It kind of like the, the sweat between my gluteal crease, um, <laughs> and made it come down. Yeah, and, yeah. I, and I remember Ian, he was camera, a, he was like. We gotta stop, and I'm like, "What? I don't want to have to do it again. I've done it once, like one and one and one and done." And he's like, "Well, it looks like you've got a tampon hanging out of your ass. I don't know. If it's on every camera. If you're happy with that, if you want Rollo to look like he has a tampon hanging out of his ass, so I'm there trying to stick it back in. Really, I've got no, no grace at all. I'm like, I can reattach it. Don't worry." <laughs> but who came up with that? Because that's very unnatural. I mean, we did our rehearsal. On this table full of dead fish, <laughs> there's me and Alyssa, right? And uh, and we're like, okay. And Alyssa and I are just laughing through the whole thing. I mean, we just thought this was the craziest. It was just, we're on the table Aww. with dead fish, and it's, it's crazy. Fish guts all over the place. And uh, we come back in to shoot it, and I have that triangle thing with the string, and you know, I had to have someone explain it to me. Is this dental floss? I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this. And so they glue it on, and then I put it in, and then I clench. And then and then I get to set, and they had raised the table <laughs> by about two goddamn feet, right? So I'm coming up to this table. How the hell do you clench while trying to get up? On the table. So, I, a couple of really um, uh, uh, bad failures, uh, bad attempts. I finally just said, everybody, this, these are my boys. boys. These, this uh, is the film crew in yeah, Ireland. And, and uh, <laughs> let's just laugh about it, man. Let's just laugh about it's it. It's like so we zero, did. zero to so hundred intimacy in, you know. Uh, oh God, Alyssa was just awesome. She was just so funny. We just laughed all the time, and she was. She, she I thought she did such a wonderful job. Um, she was a real treat to work with. And, um. She she just brought out so many layers in that in that that character of hers and had so much for me to play against. I was so grateful. Mm-hmm. It was great. Mm-hmm. It was good times. Hey, listen, Kevin. If you were uh, if you were at the gates of Valhalla, mm-hmm. 
and Odin, whether Harvard was Odin or not, maybe Harvard standing back at you going, that battle is pretty full, man. You can only come in if you tell me a really awesome Viking story. What's the most Viking thing you have ever done in your life? How would you answer, Odin? Oh, my God, dude. Come on, Thunder Bay. What's the most Viking thing you've ever done in your life? Well, a couple of things I can't talk about because I'll have. <laughs> I don't. It's between you and Odin. I, yeah, but on a podcast with a lot of people listening, I can't say them uh, publicly, uh, some of the things that I've had to do. Um, oh, yeah. Is it time? 15 people. In 15 <gasps> people, I have to do the nostril thing. So I, it, we're, it's all online. Sorry about that. I, I'm, I'm in quarantine. <laughs> uh, people are listening. We're watching in Canada uh, to shoot this next project. And they have decided. Right now. After, you know, out of my 15 days of quarantine, that right now is the moment to um, <laughs> to get into my nostrils. It's live, people. To, it's Hollywood. Anyway. This is how it is. It's live. Um, so I guess she'll come and tell me. I, so, uh, um, you know, in my neighborhood growing up, it was, uh, I didn't realize how Viking we actually were. I mean, um, you know, most Vikings, if they were living in civilization today, would probably be in prison for life, <laughs> I'm assuming. Um <laughs> and so were most of my friends. Uh, so, uh, uh, what would I do uh, that was Viking? I've done some horrible things. I mean, it started right from the start. I was three years old, <laughs> and I, my dad had bought me this amazing uh, banana seat bike, and I loved this bike, and I really took to it. I was riding it around the neighborhood, and then this eight-year-old kid up the street, uh, Gaetan, uh, Gaetan Levesque, Gaetan Levesque, maybe. He he decided he took it for me. He just took it. He took it to his house. And so my mom called my dad, said, uh, you know, when you come back home, um, he was driving a truck then. Uh, when you come back home. You have to go talk to the Levites and, and tell them that Gaetan stole Kevin's bike. So dad came home. He was like, okay, where's Kevin? I'm going to go over to the Levites. I'm not there. They can't find me anywhere. So my dad walks down the street and he hears this yelling, uh, screaming. And lo and behold, there's this giant three-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> on top of Gaetan Levike, who was five years older, and I'm just smashing his face. <laughs> um, so it started, the Viking thing started pretty young. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know if that's Viking, but I feel it's kind of like Viking. It's the yeah. first three-year-old story we've heard, hasn't, isn't it, Clive? It is. <laughs> <laughs> Don't take my <laughs> shit, man. Awesome. Oh, guys, it's so good to talk to you. Thank you. And just in time, now I get to go. Uh, cool. um, Before you go, Kevin, can I ask one more thing? Because I'm doing my own little thing. I'm for, I want to get everyone either saying Shield Wall or Ras Lager. But the way you just did that, would you be able to say Ras Lager, which is what uh, Jarl Borg said when he ran into... Ras Lager. Ras Lager. Ras Lager. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's right. You need to get all the Saxons all screaming. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. No, that was no awesome. Problem. We'll talk to you Thank guys you so later. much. Thanks, Clive. 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 We'll have to shout each other out. I'll be back in the fall. If Great. I love it. We'll be back in Cali. Right. So. I'm not going anywhere. All right, brother. Nice Bye, to sweetheart. see you, Amy. Lots so of lovely. love. Yeah, kisses to all the babies. Bye. Bye. This is Vicast. It's a Viking thing. With Clive Standen and Amy Bailey.
Follow the Vikings on Vicast Official.